I was talking about how we can measure the process of evolution, the rate of evolution, or you can think of it as the evolvability of a neoplasm. So there are five parameters that affect the rate of uh, evolution. So there's the mutation rate, there's the stem cell population size, there's the stem cell generation time, how fast are stem cells turning over, there's uh, the, what we call a selective coefficient, so how big of an advantage does a particular mutation give a clone. Uh, you can also measure that in terms of the clonal expansion rate. And then the last one is heritability. So how heritable are the phenotypes? What's the correlation between the parent cell and the daughter cells in terms of cell uh, division? Um, and it turns out we now have methods for measuring all of those parameters of evolution in neoplasms. And so once you measure the rate of evolution, our hypothesis is that the more fast evolving neoplasms will be more likely to progress to malignancy, more likely to uh, evolve resistance to therapies, um, and more likely to, to relapse after, after therapy. So for CML, I think that what really the big questions we can address with these measurements are which CML patients are likely to become, go through blast crisis and become life-threatening disease, and also after therapy, which minimal residual disease cases are likely to relapse. What do you have to do to measure these things? Ideally, is you can have a, some kind of single cell genomic measurement, like low pass whole genome sequencing or uh, methylation assays. In the case of CML, if you can grow up colonies from single cells, then you can have enough DNA to do a lot of those whole genome measurements. And once you have that, then you can reconstruct a phylogeny or a cell lineage. And those cell lineages are very powerful tools for measuring both the history but the rate of these things. And you can see changes in mutation rate through time. You can estimate the number of stem cells from those phylogenies. Um, so the who you need is these essentially single cell assays, but we now have the technology to do that.